Welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the Grec X Night Vision Recorder. Uh, features, controls, why it might be better than existing other offerings, um, how it mounts to devices, and generally things to watch out for and what the best ways to use it are. So let's get into it. So the current version of the Grec X Night Vision Recorder has a built-in battery, so you no longer need to worry about running external battery packs on the back of your helmet. You don't need to run a USB wire. Um, there's no snag hazards or anything like that. Everything is fully self-contained within this device. Uh, all in, this thing only weighs about 70 grams, so very negligible in weight considering the capability. Um, installing is very, very easy, which makes it really handy for, you know, quickly putting it on, taking it off, or even passing it on to a friend or teammate who you want to kind of swap and have them record. Um, so quick, quickly, you just slip it over your eyepiece. So it, it's compatible with any night vision device that uses PBS 14 optics basically clamps around the ring and then there's a little wheel here on the side. You just tighten that and it snugs it up. You don't need to over tighten it or anything like that. And basically it's tight. It's not kind of, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then to uninstall it, you basically just loosen up this wheel again and then it slips right off. So I want to talk quickly about the controls on this device with really only one control. It's just this on button. Um, funny enough, there's a lot of devices out there on the market today that don't even have an on button. Uh, those devices, basically what you do is you just plug it in and supply power and it's instantly on. Um, so while that's good from a, you know, accountability perspective and just making sure that you're always recording, um, ends up being a bit of a pain in the ass because those same devices record in one minute increments. So uh, essentially what happens is you, you supply power, it starts recording for a minute. Um, and then if you need to stop the recording for any reason, you have to almost wait another full minute after your your desired stop point to cut power. Otherwise, whatever you wanted to record up to that point in time is going to be lost. Um, so obviously, you know, we had some experience with some of those devices and it ended up being such a it's kind of a bit of a pain in the ass, especially, you know, if you think about bringing all your, all those clips into post-processing or editing and you're trying to stitch the clips together, having, you know, if you're out there for like half an hour, an hour, you have like 60 one minute clips. Um, and the other thing is the, the footage wasn't, it wasn't really, you couldn't really put it back to back. There was some overlap between each of the one minute clips. So it ended up being just like a huge editing nightmare. Uh, so with the Grec X, they uh, gave you full control of when this, when you want to start and stop the video. Um, basically with this button, with this on button, you hold it, you hold it down and the device will power up. And this, this little blue light here will be solid blue. Uh, and then tap it again to start recording, uh, tap it to stop recording and it'll go back to standby, which is solid blue, and then hold this to turn off and then the light will be off and then you know your device is off. Um, one other thing is that this device records in five minute clips automatically. So what that means is if you start recording um, and you don't press the stop button after five minutes, it'll automatically kind of cut that clip into a five minute uh, and then move on to the next clip. Uh, but you always have the option to stop any recording at any point in time uh, just by tapping this button and then it'll basically properly cut the clip without corrupting the file and then from there you can pull your sd card or just turn the device off and what's nice about this light compared to a lot of other recorders is that when you actually have this you know on on your night vision device and it's within your peripheral view this blue light's going to be visible so it'll tell you exactly when it's recording or if it's recording uh, when it's not uh, like i said it's got the built-in battery pack rechargeable via usb micro uh, this lasts about five hours of continuous recording, takes micro SD cards that are removable. So what's nice about this recorder is that the camera arm is actually cantilevered away from the main body of the camera. So a lot of other recorders, um, including actually the older version of the Grec X, uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like. A lot of current recorders on the market basically have the main, main board, the main motherboard. Um, sitting right next to the camera and while that's good because it makes for more continuous housing um, what ends up happening is that when you have it on your on your head is that this piece entire piece now is bumping into your eye pro or your eyebrows or whatever um, even if even in the inverted configuration so um, the grec x basically solves that it only um, kind of protrudes towards your face as much as it really needs to. So it's basically the most unobtrusive design that's currently out there right now. So I showed you guys what it looks like on the Boson Proton. Um, what's nice about this and the way that I've set it up the way it is right now is that 
even if even though the boson proton and, and even other night vision devices like the katana which has a soft ipd stop um, it doesn't necessarily change your ipd the reason why that is is because with most of the weight kind of pointed straight downwards it naturally falls you essentially basically set up the camera exactly in the orientation that you want it and again when you're installing this you want to make sure that your camera is not tilted left or right because when you actually bring that footage into your computer and do post-processing or editing um, your footage is you don't want your footage to be skewed and you have to kind of crop it in and rotate it and all that all that nonsense so when you're when you're setting it up, basically what you probably want to do is, is set this up so that, you know, like this is a horizon that's level and you want to make sure that your camera is also level so it gives you the, the highest chance of success uh, in terms of kind of getting level footage. Um, so that's on the Boson Proton, which is an articulating system. Um, and then on the RNVG, it's pretty straightforward. Same thing, just slip it over. Um, and what's nice about the non-articulating systems such as the RNVG is like, you don't necessarily have to worry about you know your 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 art, your optical pod kind of rotating and then your footage rotating also. Um, you know with the RMVG because it's a fixed bridge system, you basically set your horizon level on your camera and that's it. Like it's you know that time and time again it's going to be level, um, so you don't have to kind of mess with it. So again, really quickly on and off. Um, it does not support mounting it upside down like the old one does, uh, like the wired version. So the orient only orientation that I can recommend for the RMVG is basically kind of that that kind of the bottom slung position. And again, what's nice about this is that you know it's going to be the, the main body of the camera is going to be kind of pointed away from your face or away from, from your face. So when, if you have eye pro, um, it's not really going to impinge on it as much as like something like like this or other systems that are currently out there are going to do. And then for all my mono friends, uh, PBS 14 is going to only offer you a couple of mounting possibilities just because of the fact that there is a uh, battery pack, knob, control board, etc. as well as actual J-arm. So uh, the only orientation that I found works for this is, so for example, if this is your dovetail, right, and this is level and you're setting up this, setting this up for your right, for your right eye, like if you're right eye dominant, um, basically you can now mount your uh, Grec X upside down and I think this is kind of as far over as you as you can go. Uh, this ensures that your footage is still level um, and you might want it you might have to play with it a little bit by way of just kind of tilting it away from the actual dove, your, your NVG mount dovetail shoe um, so that it, it the footage remains level. Uh, and then switching it over to the other side is again pretty straightforward. Um, so with the noise fighters and again like this is going to depend on which arm you use. Uh, so again, if this is if you're setting it this up for your left eye, so if this is your, you know, your your level, your horizon. Uh, unfortunately, for the lefties, for the left eye dominant folks amongst us, uh, you're kind of host um, with this because, like I said, the the Grec X will only fit on the PBS 14 on, in one specific position. Um, so what you're gonna have to do here is obviously your footage is gonna be rotated 90 degrees. And you, what you probably have to do is go into your post processing, uh, crop out the you know, crop up what you don't need and then basically flip it back right around. However, the other flip side of this actually might be good for like Instagram, right? So your footage is gonna be shot tall. Um, so this could be a plus, depending if you're trying to get footage in, in landscape versus portrait mode. So that's that's basically uh, the PBS 14. And then moving it over onto the Tanto. The Tanto is nice because, you know, you don't have that huge uh, battery compartment. Um, so in this case with the Tanto, you slip it over and basically like that this is your J arm, you actually have a lot more degrees of freedom in terms of like orientation of where you can move it. So as an example, um, let's say your J arm is kind of going this way and this is level and this is your left hand, this is your setup for left eye. Uh, you can get very close to being level um, with the Tanto and then kind of flipping it over to your right eye, which is kind of this orientation. Um, you can probably play around with it, but it could, I think, let me just kind of, visualize visualizes a bit yeah so as an example it'd probably be you know your this shoe would probably be at about 45 degree angles like this so you could get um you know flat or level footage with the grec x in this orientation as well so um tanto is going to be a bit more um you know ergonomic for in a couple of reasons one is obviously the fact that the actual device is lighter so it you know attaching something like this isn't going to make it substantially heavy and I think this entire combo with the intensifier and a battery is going to weigh about the same as a PVS 14 
with no recorder. Um, so just kind of another reason why you might want to consider the Tanto, especially if you're going to be doing like a lot of recording. Um, obviously, you know, the Tanto doesn't have like gain control or anything like that, but that's obviously for another video. So that's essentially how you would set up, set it up for, um, most of the night vision devices that are out there. Obviously, you know, if you have other devices that are, you know, articulating or, or fixed, they're going to be about the same and along the same lines as like the boson proton or the RNVG or some combination of those two. So, you know, the Katana is going to mount the same way as, um, you know, as the, as the boson proton. Um, one other thing I probably want to point out though, is if you are, uh, you know, if you, if you're right eye dominant and you're trying to get footage, um, you know, and you're doing a lot of sh like flat range shooting or even airsoft or whatever, um, probably I would rashly recommend putting it over your dominant eye. Um, just because of the fact that if you're going passive, then it kind of gives you that nice, uh, point of view, uh, view, point of view look like through your, you know, your red dot or EO tech or whatever, as opposed to if you put it over your left eye, but your right eye is the one that looks through, looks through your sights, then you sort of lose that, uh, you know, first person view experience, so to speak. And I think probably the most frequently asked question about this is like, how much does it get in the way? And I think I sort of already answered that at the beginning of the video. Um, ergonomically, like I said, it's not going to be too much in your way in terms of, you know, the, the, you know, whether or not it's going to hit your eye pro or whatnot, you may have to move your night vision device a little bit further away from your face for obvious reasons. Cause now you have to account for, there's a thing kind of sticking out the back of it. Um, I do want to point out that the camera is not, it's not dead center, right? So it's not like, you're not, this is not fully obstructing your view. And one of the other tricks you can do, which, uh, we've done for probably the year that we've used these is, um, this is going to be a bit hard to explain, but essentially what you want to do is because the arm is coming in from the bottom of the device, what you can do is you can actually kind of point the device up so that this arm is a little bit less in view. So what we found just from using this is if we, if we kind of use our night vision mount and, you know, use the tilt control to tilt the night vision device up so that this is like a lot minimized, this actually only takes up about, I would say five to 10% of your view, if even that, and even, even if you're doing, you know, a lot of, um, passive, you know, right eye dominant shooting or even left eye dominant, but if you're doing a lot of passive shooting, um, where you need to like look at a reticle or anything like that, this can be, you know, set up on your helmet in such a way that, you know, like I said, if you tilt it, then, then, you know, this is going to be a lot less intrusive. Now keep in mind also, like it's not, there are, there's going to be trade-offs, right? So, so don't expect it to be, you know, completely transparent or anything like that. And that's another area where, yes, for sure, definitely, if you have binos, like the, the apparent, you know, blockage uh, or, or, or obstruction of your, vis of your vision is not going to be as apparent um, with a binocular system because of the fact that, you know, your brain essentially merges the left and right images together and kind of basically makes this fade away a little bit as opposed to using something like a PBS-14 where... Um, you know, you only have one eye that's using night vision. The Grec X also has this microphone slot. Um, and why that's useful is to get actually good audio. Um, a lot of recorders out there on the market today don't have, don't have this for whatever reason, um, maybe just to prevent dust or moisture or whatever, which is good. Uh, but if you're trying to get good audio, um, that's a problem. So they created these, like these three little slots here. Uh, this is probably the only recorder that we've tested um, so far. We've we've tried a few um, that gives you the best audio. Obviously, you know you're not exp we're not you're not getting like Dolby, you know Dolby quality out of like this this little device. But as an example, if you're trying to record yourself speaking or others close by speaking or you know any other sounds, like this does a really good job of it and retains a lot of that um, first person feel, first person quality. So uh, with this recorder, you will notice that the footage you get is going to be a little bit chopped on the front and top and bottom. Uh, the reason why is basically a, f a number of reasons. One is the, um, the focal length of the actual lens itself, but also, you know, theoretically, you could actually get a full circle if you move this kind of a bit further back. Um, the problem though, obviously, as you can imagine, is if you try to move this back as far as possible while it does work, this just means that this is going to be more intrusive into your, um, your, it might hit your goggles or might hit your face. 
Uh, so there is going to be a bit of trade-off. What I have found though is that it, it does basically capture 90% of you know whatever it is that you want to see. Um, with the option, obviously, if you want to capture more, you can just kind of move this out. And, and that's another kind of plus about the way that this mounts is as opposed to the one, you know, there's some other recorders that mount to um, the, the iCup retaining ring. Uh, with that system, like you can't really adjust, um, you know, how far or, you know, how close this lens is to your eyepiece lens. So with this, you get a bit of flexibility. Uh, obviously, again, way easier to install uh, and way less uh, fragile or finicky. Um, basically slip this on, tighten this up, good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is just throw together some uh, raw video clips along with the raw audio straight out of this device so you see exactly what you're gonna be getting. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos, and we'll see you on the next one. No, I'm gonna leave now. Where's the, where's the time? I have no idea, we'll find it at some point. Until you're yeah. done, that's when you know it. Are you ready? Don't worry. Like Stand by. Peace. 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 Corey's quick. Nice.